Good morning. Good morning. Our service begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also have grace and powerful faithfully to, achieve, to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate, and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with a sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, 
and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and the needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of your children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Col Colossians. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we had heard of your faith in, Je in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have all for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learned from Ep Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and he, is, he has made known to, to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all spiritual wisdom, wisdom and understanding so that you may lead, lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you... May, <clears throat> May you made strong, may you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom he, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, you have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. <clears throat> so there was these two uh, neighbors, two ladies. They were neighbors, and one of them, husband, had gone missing. So they went down to the police station to make a report. And when they got down there, the lady who, whose husband was missing, she said, he's about six foot three. And the neighbor said, no, he's not. He's like barely taller than me. And the officer said, what color hair does he have? He says, he has a full head of brown hair. And she said, he's been gray for at least five years. Well, how much does he weigh? He says, I don't know, 150 pounds. And the woman said, if he weighs 200 pounds, he weighs an ounce. And the lady looked at him and said, would you shut up? They might find him. <laughs> huh? Neighborly, right? This, this passage, this gospel lesson is all about how to be a neighbor. And what, you know, I tell you guys all the time that in text, in the Bible, there's a lot of humor, and we miss it because we read everything so seriously. But this is one of those places. This lawyer is likely a Pharisee, because they were all mostly lawyers. This lawyer is well-studied. This lawyer is very Jewish, and he is studying the law, and he is very concerned with, what does it mean to be a good, faithful Jew? And Jews did not like Samaritans. They don't like them. Anytime the rest of your life you read the gospel and there's an interaction between Jesus and a Samaritan, understand he is operating and interacting with the enemy. These are the people they like the least, right? These are the Alabama fans. This is them. This is a Samaritan. And so this lawyer comes up and says, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus says, what does scripture say? And he gives a perfect answer because he's a lawyer and he's well studied, right? Love God, love your neighbor. Good job, you gave the right answer, do that. The lawyer, trying to be slick, says, yeah, but who's my neighbor? <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna get him. That's exactly right, you're getting it. Reagan gets it, Reagan gets it. This lawyer is trying to be slick and he says, well, who's my neighbor? So Jesus tells him the story. This guy gets robbed and beat half to death and a priest comes by, a very upstanding Jewish person. A Levite comes by, a very upstanding Jewish person. They go to the opposite side of the road, and they walk around him. And then a Samaritan, the scourge of the earth, the Alabama fan. Amen. 
exactly. The person that nobody in that community can stand walks up, sees him hurting, takes mercy and pity upon him, tends to his wounds, loads him on his horse or donkey or whatever the animal is, it just says the animal, takes him to the inn, gives the innkeeper some money and says, take care of him, I'll be back in a few days. And when I get back, I'll pay you if there's more I owe you. And then Jesus looks at this lawyer who's trying to be slick and says, who is the good neighbor? And the lawyer has to say, roll tide. <laughs> See what I did right there, Garland? That was just for you. The lawyer has to say, the Samaritan, the one who cared for him, he is the good neighbor. He's the one. And this is Jesus making a joke in the Bible. This is Jesus' way of saying, hey, see, y'all can laugh too. It's good. It's good. Martin Luther King, in his last speech he ever, ever gave in Memphis before he was assassinated, referenced the story of the good shepherd, I mean the good Samaritan. And in his speech that he gave when he referenced the good Samaritan, he talked about the, the two, the Levite and the priest who walked by. He said, they asked the question, what will happen to me if I tend to this guy? What will happen to me if I do something to him? And what will happen to me in my role in the community? What will happen to me if I, if I kneel down and get my hands dirty? What will happen to me if I serve this person this way? What will happen to my status? What will happen to my position in the temple? What will happen to my friends and family when they see me acting this way? What will happen to me if I do this? And then the Samaritan comes along and he asks the question in reverse. What will happen if I don't do anything for this guy? What will happen if I leave him in the ditch? What will happen if I don't tend to his wounds? What will happen if I don't load him on my animal and take him to the end? What will happen if I don't pay to make sure he's taken care of? What will happen to him if nobody does anything? That's the good neighbor. That's the good neighbor. And it's a pertinent reminder to me as I stand in this place preaching my last sermon to you guys. I came here a little over five years ago and I was asking, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to me? First time I'd ever been a rector in the church, what will it be like? What will these people be like? What are they going to do? How are they going to do it? Who will they be? What are we going to get into together? Who knew? <laughs> All kinds of stuff. And evidently, built into your DNA on some level was an answer or the question of what will happen to this guy if we don't do what we're supposed to do? What will happen to his ministry if we don't follow Christ? What will happen to him as a priest if we don't show up and do the things that we're called to do by God? What will happen if we aren't faithful to who we are as the body of Christ? And for five and a half years, you have showed up and we have filled, I think it's six, 18-wheeler? I think it's six. It's either five or six. It's 20 tons of load, so either 100 or 120 tons of goods that this little bitty church right here in Zachary, Louisiana, that rarely has over 75 people attending it on a Sunday, we put a trailer out there, we filled it up in the heat and the humidity five or six times to help people who had had destruction from hurricanes because we've been there. And we asked the question over and over again, what will happen if we don't? We did it when other people in this town couldn't. We did it. We sat right here in this church in 2018 when the financial wheels came off the bus and we responded and we did what we had to do. And the question was asked, apparently it was asked, what will happen if we don't? What will happen if we do nothing? And the answer to that question wasn't suitable, so we did something. And then COVID comes along and everybody has, I mean, we're still dealing with some of it to some degree, but in 2020, it was a mess, y'all. In 2020, we shut the preschool for a month, laid off every employee in the place, except for one. One. And I set her down and looked her in the face and said, get your resume polished off and get ready because in 30 to 60 days, we're probably going to be unemployed and we both are going to need to find something to do because I have no idea how we're going to get this place up and going again. And the answer to that question is, what will we do if we, what will happen if nothing happens wasn't acceptable and we did things? And the response from you and your leadership in this place overcame that. And people are like hound dogs around here apparently because there's been so many grants written and rewarded here at St. Patrick's Episcopal Day School that I lost count of them all. 
But we're now in a place where we've gone from 2018 where we were in financial rock bottom, where there was, I mean, literally had no cash flow, to a place to where the school's probably in the best financial position it's been in in the past 20 years, if not ever in its life. Because this place and the people in it asked the answer to the question of what will happen if we do nothing? What will happen if we do nothing? What will happen if, if we don't go out and serve our neighbors? That's not an acceptable question. It's not the, the answer to that being nothing is not acceptable. And you guys have consistently, in the life of this place, answered it over and over and over again. And that is not lost on me. It's not lost on me because it inspires and empowers me as I think about the next step in my own ministry, what will it look like? And the, 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 the true answer is, is all I have to do to be a faithful follower of Christ is go wherever God calls me. And when I get there, ask the question of what will happen if no one does anything and then answer it faithfully. That's how I move to the next place. That's how I do the next thing God is calling me to. And it's also exactly what you do. Goodbyes are hard. The past three weeks have sucked. I know for each one of you, you've come and said like bye to me and it's been your bye. And I've said that about 300 times in the past two weeks, three weeks. Every day, it's somebody, hey, can I talk to you? And I'm like, yeah, you can. But man, I'm really sick of this conversation. Not because I don't love you, but because I do. Goodbyes are hard. Goodbyes will sometimes make us think that we're stuck in places and what are we going to do next? But you guys already have the answer to the question. What will happen if no one does anything? I don't know. Because in the past five and a half years, I haven't ever seen the question answered that way. And I haven't ever seen it answered that way in the life of this place. I haven't seen it answered that way in this community. I haven't seen it answered that way within this diocese. I haven't seen the question answered that way in my entire time here. And you're not going to answer the question by saying do nothing now. You're going to continue to go out into the world and to serve Christ by serving others. I I'm confident that the next time a hurricane hits, and it will, unfortunately, and it may hit me, because I'm moving back to Hurricane Alley. Y'all know, I grew up in Mobile, y'all, Fairhope. I've slept through more hurricanes than I can name. But wherever it hits, I'm confident that a trailer is going to show up in that front parking lot and you're going to fill it. I'm confident that you're going to serve the needs of the people in this community through a school that continues to reach out and to serve hundreds of families every single year. I'm confident that you're going to continue to seek and to serve your neighbor right here in Zachary by finding ways to go and serve people at Oakwood and to serve people at the police department and the fire department and teaming up with people in this community who have the desire to serve others as well, you will continue to do that because that is who you are. It doesn't mean that goodbye doesn't suck and it doesn't mean that it's okay and it doesn't mean that you even have to say, okay, I don't even have to feel bad. No, you're allowed to feel however you feel. But the reality is, is you're not allowed to just sit on your hands and do nothing. None of us are. We're called by Christ to be faithful followers. In the colic today, I don't know if you caught it, the colic we prayed at the beginning of the service, but we prayed to God that we, we would know the, the, those things that we ought to do and that we would have the power through the Spirit to do them. The thing that we ought to do right now is the thing we've been doing for three weeks, and that's to say goodbye to one another in a way that represents and holds up the love and the grace of God. And the thing that we do tomorrow is what the Samaritan did. We ask the question, what will happen if no one does anything for this man? What will happen if no one gets out and does the work of God's kingdom? What will happen if the faithful people of St. Patrick's don't go out into Zachary and share the good news of God's gospel? What will happen when we don't do those things? Knowing what will happen is the inspiration for us to continue to do what we've already been doing. It's the inspiration for all of us to continue to step faithfully into the life to which Christ calls us. It's the inspiration for us to be the body of Christ right here in this place. It's the inspiration for me to go and to serve in the body of Christ in a different place and to serve those people well. It's the inspiration for this community and for each of you. And it will always be the thing that compels us. It will always be the thing that invites us and moves us and empowers us 
to grow every single day more deeply into the people God has created us to be. What will happen if no one does anything? I don't know. I don't know because that's not who you are. I don't know because that's not how you answer the question. I don't know, and I look forward to seeing how you respond to that question moving into the rest of your life. Amen. Together, let us stand and profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop, for our bishop elect, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Zachary, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the well-being of Tina, Connie, and the Cannon family, for Jeannie, the Norman family, the Dickinson family, the Hurst family, Beth Graves, Shannon, Jeremy, Denise, Sharin, Joseph, Jason, Thelma, Riley, the Riley family, the Palmer family, Lois, Diane, 
Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and our offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Patrick and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. We're going to ask that we add one additional prayer. So let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the ministry of Father Anthony Freeman, for his service to St. Patrick's Church to this congregation, to our schools, to this community, and to those in need far beyond in many distant places. We thank you for his leadership and his tireless efforts throughout his ministry here, both in good times and in difficult times. We pray, Father, that you will bless him, guide him, enlighten him, and give him strength as he moves forward in service to the churches and to the people of the Episcopal Diocese of the Central Gulf Coast. We pray that he will grant Ashley, Annie, Judy, Ashton, and Mary Carmen health and happiness and peace and their endless love as they embark on their new journeys and their new adventures. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Using the form on the top of page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, dude. Appreciate you, man. Peace, sweetie.
Peace. Peace, bud. Good job today. Peace, my friend. Peace, Mom. Peace, my friend. Peace, sweetheart. Oh, I got one from you too. Peace to those at home. Please be seated. If I'd have known that telling y'all I was leaving would have got folks to come to church, I'd have said it years ago. <laughs> if you're visiting with us, welcome. We're very glad that you're here. Um, please fill out the form in the, page, in, the, in, the, in the pew in front of you, and please be sure you come next door. I'm sure you're going to say something about that in a minute, right? Mm -hmm. um, guys, I love y'all. Y'all been good. A really good place for me to, uh, to serve. It's been a delight and an honor, and, a, and I mean it. And uh, Jesse and I were talking the other day, and he said, you know, I can't put words around how I feel about this. And, and I, I very much find that to be true myself. Um, I am a better person and a better priest and a better husband and a better dad because I've been here serving with you guys. And so... Um, I, I thank you for all the time that we've shared together. Um, I thank you for the, the love you've showed to me and my family. And I really do look forward to seeing um, where the Spirit moves you guys in the future. Because I know he's not done. Well, probably she's not done. The Spirit's got to be a woman. But that's a sermon for a different day. A man ain't never done that many stuff all at one time. That's all I'm saying. So just go with me on this, okay? But, um, but it really has been a pleasure and an honor to be here and to serve you and to serve with you. And alongside you. So thank you very much for calling me and thank you for making this process as, as heartfelt and as, as easy as it could possibly be, even though it's still been really hard. So thank you and God bless you. Well, good morning and just want to mention some announcements. We'll have, after this service, we'll have a Farewell reception for Father Ashley and his family next door in the parish hall to, to please come over and help send them off the proper way. Pumpkin patch sponsors are still needed. The information is in the bulletin. For $200, you will get recognition and advertisement on our website and other places. And the second annual Back to School Family Day is August 20th from 10 to 5. It's a great time for the people of Zachary to come together and love and enjoy each other's company. Although the folks will be on the children, there will also be activities for adults as well. It's hosted by the city of Zachary. All this is in, in your bulletin and in the weekly email that we'll send out. And other announcements in the bulletin and weekly email like the men's breakfast and all. Um, you know, this is a very difficult time for me for, for a lot of reasons and, and I, I feel I feel the emotion, and I feel I think the void that um, many of you may have similar feelings. But I think it was very appropriate this morning. The gospel was a good Samaritan. The only thing that was a little bit off was that was a priest that passed the person up. Not our priest. Ashley wouldn't have done that because not only to walk down a road and see someone, he has gone out of his way to help people in situations. I'm saying from Houston to Homer, we've come to people's aid, not when they asked, but when we saw the need and helped them with it. You know, for that, and, and Jesse, I really thank you for that, that prayer you gave. It was very, 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 very appropriate and, and hit, hit all the, some of the points that that, that I wanted to make. But I hope, Father Ashley, we have prepared you for your next ministry as much as you prepared us in our next chapter of this church. And I know that God knows our needs. And I know that God will be with us in this process to fulfill the need for the next rector. And it's kind of, we've gone, we've gone full circle. Well, I've gone full circle. I was chair of the search committee that called Ashley. Now I'm senior warden 
to see him off. But it's been a blessing, a blessing for us at this church, a blessing for Zachary to include the police and fire department, a blessing for this diocese, and really for this region, as I said, with Houston and home, and God knows the numerous other people that have been aided and helped because of the discretionary funds and other things that we have done, we have done for them. And I think without Ashley's love for his neighbor, we would not have been agitated to do the things that we have done, especially he's talking about filling those trucks up four or five times. It was because of his love and his leadership that agitated us to do it. So for that, I want to thank him. And he has put the fire in our heart how to step up and help people. And to me, a testimony, the best testimony I can see the Father Ashley is, we keep that fire burning. We keep that love for the neighbor, for our neighbor, at the front of all our actions and all our thoughts, right behind that love for God. I'm not saying put it in front of God. But we keep that fire burning. And that will be, to me, the greatest testimony to you and that your leadership has done great things for us here at St. Patrick. And again, brother, I want to thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, man. All right. Before we do birthdays, I think we have a, a Mary Carmen. Would you please come forward? Thank you. <clears throat> well, and, and just one last, th one last thing before we get into the blessings for the birthdays and all. You know, we did Genevieve last week. We're doing Mary Carmen this week. Now, we do have needle and thread for males. So if we got any uh, young men out there who would like to join this class, I'm sure Teresa will, will welcome them. So thank you. celebrating a birthday and anniversary please come forward this week or you know whenever come on just Ashton just had a birthday turned a big 119 uh, 19 Thursday evening or afternoon morning I don't know he was born in the morning so he's getting old I'm assuming since both of you it's an anniversary never know my brother and his wife got married on their birthdays. How many years, John? 19? Wow, you've been putting up with them for 19 years? They got married when you were born, son. <clears throat> Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for all the many blessings of this life. We thank you especially for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Pray that you be with them as they begin another year. Give them a sense of your love and grace wherever they may be. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon them now and remain with them always. Amen. Happy birthday and anniversary, guys. Beth, where are you at? Is there any other announcements I'm supposed to make? God's up. Thank you again. I, I love you. I'm going to miss you. But we will indeed see you again because when you come to the beach, you need to call. We'll, we'll go eat lunch. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you.
Our service continues with, um, with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of his name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, and your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Patrick, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
using the prayer at the bottom of page 365 together. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.